Hello and welcome back to the Not The Old Firm YouTube channel. My name is Ben Banks. Back to review the last games of 2020. It's been um, a fairly bizarre year, I think it'd be fair to say. Um, but Scottish football comes to a close for the year and it's quickly back in the new year. But enough of that for now. There's a full card of Premiership action on the Wednesday following the games on Boxing Day. Celtic v Dundee United, St Johnson v Hamilton, St Mirren Rangers, Livingston Aberdeen, Hibs v Ross County and Mullow Kilmarnock. We will be at four of them, St Johnson Hamilton, St Mirren Rangers, Hibs Ross County and Mullow Kilmarnock. So do keep an eye out on our website, YouTube and all our socials etc. Keep up to date with that. In the Premiership, uh, Celtic v Dundee United. Um, hi, Dundee United. That's a three o'clock, it's a weird one. There's a lot of three o'clock kickoffs, and there's also a four o'clock into one six o'clock and quarter past six. So the football's all over the place for those more. Um, but Celtic Dundee United is the, the first one. Obviously, the news have been dominated this week of Jim McLean's sad passing. Obviously, he's a bit before my time, um, but obviously, everybody in Scottish football is well aware of his achievements in Europe and and creation of the new firm sort of during the 80s. And I don't know if you remember mm. about them than I do. Yeah, yeah. But from what I've read, the stories I've heard this week and from what I gather, he was um, a titan of Scottish football. Ah, uh, you'll not see many like him in Scottish football again. Um, there's just there's that many different stories about him. Uh, for the contracts, he used to sign boys in at Dundee United. He signed boys to ridiculous lengths of contracts at like 15, 16 year old. And, his achievements is the last time really Scotland had anything with, with the old firm that was, that was any good, really. Yeah, and that was sort of the end of an era, really, when Dundee United and Aberdeen eventually their sort of golden eras um, came to a close because you haven't really had, you've had obviously Aberdeen have split the old firm and stuff, and Mullow have finished second on a few occasions, but it's not been quite the same. It's not been like you know, perhaps Aberdeen. In the sort of maybe mid twenty tens, no, the nothing close, nothing, but close. nothing, but yeah, nothing close. That's the closest we've been to something even remotely like it, but nothing on the level that no. uh, Aberdeen. Because I think it was more of the European achievements, the likes of, well, even even the domestic stuff, and nothing. This other team was winning trophies, winning uh, titles, and whatnot. It was a really good side. So I mean, yeah, a team full of Scot actual proper bona fide legends of Scottish football. So. Aye, um, aye, there's not been anything at West Rangers or Celtic that's come any, anywhere, clear, anywhere close with Jim McLean done. St Johnson v Hamilton is another one of the games. It, before, I don't know if you've actually seen this before we started recording, but St Johnson have had a positive COVID test. Yep. Hamilton not exactly free of COVID problems themselves over the course of the season. They've probably been the most consistent. Not They've not had mass outbreaks or anything, but Hamilton seem to be quite unfortunate. Every few weeks they just seem to have another couple of players down with COVID. Uh, Brian Rice obviously holding um, that his squad's a bit fuller. This is a massive game at the bottom. St Johnson had picked up form, but now they've lost a few in a row. And the, with how tight the bottom of the league is, it's 10th v 11th now. And Hamilton potentially could go level on points with St Johnson with a game in hand. Yeah, really tough one for both sides. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked if Aki's come away with something here. They just, I know they lost 3 0 at Celtic at the weekend there. Or uh, was it in the week? I don't even know. Yes. That was the weekend. It was. Um, aye, so I mean, uh, albeit they lost 3 0 at Celtic, I think they've played some okay stuff recently. They didn't play terribly against Celtic. So I think they're kind of on the bubble a wee bit. And aye, uh, it wouldn't be a huge shock if Aki's come, come away with three points for that one. Yeah, it's probably, we'll, we'll speak about it in a wee bit, but maybe. Ross County will be looking at that one because it's, there's not really any great result for them. They've got an away trip to Hibs, which will be tough. But if St Johnson win that, then all of a sudden they're, I think, seven away from safety. But if Hamilton win, then they're potentially four points adrift again at the bottom and then potentially more um, as the weeks go on. So perhaps one for Ross County fans to keep an eye on as well. Uh, we'll hear from Conor McCarthy now, St Mirren player ahead of their game with Rangers. St Mirren, obviously, it will be a famous result in years to come, beating Rangers in the League Cup. But Conor McCarthy doesn't see why they can't do it again, although it will be a massive challenge. I think we have to um, show the same uh, level of effort that we did um, in the Cup game. Um, I think we just have to, to match um, their hard work um, because we were under no illusions 
um, how difficult a task it's going to be to beat them again. Um, but like um, the manager's been saying, we just need to, to work hard and, and do what we're good at. I'm not so sure about that. Um, we know it's going to be a, a very difficult game. Um, the strength of strength and depth of Rangers um, is incredible. And, you know, for them to only lose once this season um, is a testament to them. Um, so, like I said, we're under no illusions how difficult the game is going to be. Yeah, St. Mirren, I, I know the expectations raised for them because they beat them last time. Despite- no, no, not at all. Uh- I think this is one of these ones more so than the League Cup game where you could look at it for St Mern as being a free hit. Uh, not because it's a game where you immediately expect them to lose, but I think people have built up a little bit too much expectation. Um, and I don't think ultimately it really affects St Mern if they lose this one. You know, I think that they've shown they're in really good form. They've shown that they can bounce back with some poor result. And yeah, it's... If they were to win, it would be a bigger surprise if they were to win this one than it was the League Cup one, simply because of the result in the League Cup game. Like, I, don't, I don't see Lightning striking twice. Um, Aberdeen, uh, we heard from J. Emmanuel Thomas, Livingston striker, after his um, somewhat fortuitous goal at the weekend against Kilmarnock. He spent 18 months on the sidelines after a spell in Asia, but now he's loving his football back in West Lothian. Yeah, fantastic. Obviously, after conceding the goal, after a, f- a very balanced and not very active in chance by his first half, um, to to equalise straight after they got the penalty. Obviously, I haven't we haven't seen it back. We don't know if it is a penalty or not. Um, but yeah, it was a great feeling to get the goal back. Obviously, gave the game a bit more balance straight away. Yeah, it's a great win. The, the boys have been fantastic. Uh, we've worked hard. Obviously, we've had a lot of games. Um, obviously, the rotation, the players that have come in, the players that have come out. Um, but everybody seems to have each other's backs, and it seems like it's going well. Yeah, obviously, um, we spoke about this. Obviously, since we in the cup, we spoke about going to Hamden and stuff like that. And obviously, it seems to have come round much quicker. And it seemed like that we was playing in the group stages a couple of weeks ago. Um, so it was something that we all look forward to. It was a great opportunity to even get to the final as well. Yeah, it's taken some time. Obviously, every style of football is different. Um, obviously, today, a wet and windy day ended up being there's a quite a lot of back and forth up in the air, but sometimes you've got to hustle and bustle just to, to grind it out and get the three points, which is what we, what, what we did today. Um, and obviously, I'm here and I'm playing and I'm enjoying, and obviously, the boys and the staff and all that have all made me feel welcome. I feel like I'm, I'm settled comfortably now, and we hope that we can just keep going. As we've already mentioned, Hibs v Ross County is another one we heard from Josh Doig ahead of that one. Young left back went up against James Tavernier at the weekend when Hibs played Rangers narrowly losing 1 0 and did himself absolutely no harm against him. And he's looking forward to a brighter 2021 despite the fact he had a very, very promising 2020. That was brilliant. You know, like a massive statement like that. You walk out, obviously, without the fans, I can imagine it would be much better, much more, much better atmosphere. but Still, just quite a place that Ibrox uh, against the players that I play against. That was a, a big occasion, and you know you, you don't want really to feel the pressure too much, but you do. You do get a wee um, a few butterflies in your stomach before the game. But once you're on the pitch, you just go. You just play your game. No, I loved it. Loved every second. Yeah, well, that's my. I'm, I like to think I've got a wee bit of turn of pace and kind of just uh, take a tuck by him and run and see what happens. So, uh, unfortunately, a few times I like, take it by him, but then just the final ball. I get the final ball right because obviously. Teams like Rangers, you're not going to get many fat, like chances against them. So when you do get an opportunity like that, that's when you need to you need to have that final ball. You need to have that like that uh, color color pass. So some of that could, something I can work on definitely. But um, it's good to know that I, I'd say one of the better players in the league right now. I can take him on and kind of keep him out of the game a wee bit. So that was a big confidence boost for myself. Uh, definitely, because coming in at the start of the year, I was playing 18s. Um, coming back from a back injury, I was playing teens and then. Uh, Matthew too many said I think the best thing for you is to go alone and then obviously at Queen's Park I loved every minute I, I felt like playing against actual men has helped me so much more and it kicked me on and then only got to play six or seven games for Queen's Park obviously because of Covid cutting the season short but no I loved every second of playing hand and stuff it was just an experience no many get but um, no I feel over lockdown obviously it was hard trying to keep yourself fit keep yourself active like trying to keep that enthusiasm up but uh, I felt like I, I did keep myself in a good shape, watch what I was eating and I was going on runs. And the, the hardest part was trying to keep yourself on a football because, you know, hard to get to and pitches. But 
no, I definitely feel I, I kept myself in a, a decent enough shape. So when I come back, when I came back in summer, obviously I felt good and ready to go, and I felt like I, I fit in with the first team. Yeah, Hibs, um, Hibs have actually drawn a lot of games at home, perhaps dropped points when they shouldn't have at home, like I said, Dundee United a couple of weeks ago, St Johnson, Motherwell at home earlier in the season. But given the form of these two sides now, I think... Uh, Hibs, Hibs win written all over it. Yeah, Ross County. John Hughes, I think, um, has got a, a big job in his hand oh. at Ross County. Oh, absolutely. Um, but if there's anybody that can turn it around, it would be Yogi. Um, I'd be... I thought you kind of pack anybody in the, the, the kind of Scottish football scene that's, that's capable of doing it, that would probably be the one that you'd pick. Yeah. yeah. I think um, he's, he's missing lots of players as well. He's got a load of injuries to deal with. And the problem with that is I feel like when you look at Ross County's squad, um, it's a bit ageing, isn't it? It's like, mm-hmm. it's guys that were good. Well, it's, it's just, it's, that's not something to worry about yet. Um, just now the main thing's just getting climb up the table, uh, worry about what your squad's going to look like in the future at a later date until until you've got an idea of what division you're going to be playing in. None of it matters. And Mull Kilmarnock's final game we'll talk about, and obviously the big talking point before this one, is the racist letter that Alex Dyer received. Um, just crazy that stuff like this still happens in 2020, especially with Alex Dyer, who has been a a massive champion for racial equality and things like that in Scottish football in particular um, since he's been in the game here as assistant and then manager of Kilmarnock and managers from across Scotland have been in condemnation of the letter he received Stephen Robinson, Jim Goodwin and Jack Ross all condemning the letter he got oh, it's, yeah, I, got, I got told about it this morning it's, you know, it's not acceptable, simply not acceptable You know, um, abuse in any form isn't acceptable I'm, I'm thinking in, in general, I think uh, football managers are seen as fair game for some reason and say what you want, do what you want, and no punishment seems to happen um, in general. And, and obviously, the racist element to it is just not acceptable in this day and age. Is 2021 we're getting into, not 1821. And you know, it's, I find some of it unbelievable, to be honest with you. Some of the abuse, but it's a platform that the social media allows people to do and be hidden. And, um, and hopefully, we can stamp it out. You know, we're all, we're all very, very keen to do that. And, Obviously got full support, what I like, and you know the football community is completely behind them. But so should society. It seems to me that you know, as I say, you can you can say what you want about football managers, their families abuse them, do whatever you want to do, and there's they perceive that they're on money, so they deserve it. I can assure you, we're not in great money, some of us. But um, it seems to be acceptable in society. But no form of abuse or racism is is acceptable. And as I say, we're we're going into 2021. It would be. It would be nice to, to start the year with a, a bit of positivity and without this kind of mindless idiots involved. Ah, listen, it's disgusting. Um, there's absolutely no place for it in uh, society, never mind football. And um, I offer my full support to um, to Alex Dyer and to anybody else who's been affected by it. I hope they catch the culprit and I hope that um, justice is served. These people are cowards. You know, send a letter anonymously. Um, a weak-minded people who, unfortunately, give other people a bad name. So I'm glad to say that is a, a real minority in society who um, are of that mindset. You know, the majority of us, I think, are good people. Accept everybody from different backgrounds, um, different nationalities, different religions. I think we've we're, we've moved on greatly, um, and uh, hopefully things will continue to improve. But I hope to catch the coward that send the letter to Alex Dyer and I hope that um, he gets what's coming to him. Yeah, I mean, I, I would also say that I think Scottish football has done a lot out with this season to um, to make sure we try and educate as many people as we can. Um, you know, I've, I've been a long-time supporter of the show races with ICAR from the time as a player and then my work at PFA and I think that organisation along with others have highlighted that for a long time, even prior to this season. Um, what this does again is just emphasise the need for that continued support for these organisations that provide that type of message to the wider public and it can educate um, younger people as well because um, it is usually the minority that um, that behave in that manner um, and is disappointed to see it again. But um, I think Alec would know um, how his standing within the game in Scotland, how all the managers and coaches view him and 
and how much support he would have um, from all of us in the game. Yeah, yeah. shameful. Uh, I don't think there's anything other than that to say, really. It's just it's embarrassing that these people still think this is any way acceptable in 2020 going on to 2021. Yeah, I think Rock Stephen Robinson said it just a bit as well. He said, it's 2021, we're going to, not 1821. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just, there's not there's not a lot. When I asked, obviously I listened to Stephen Robinson's answer, but I asked Jim Goodwin and Jack Ross personally the question, and I don't know, I almost don't know what I was expecting them to say. Do you know what I mean? Like, there's not a lot. You can say it's obviously wrong and it's obviously a minority of people, but I feel it is still important that these people in these positions, similar to Alex Dyer, do speak out against it because if we did just go, it's, oh, it's a minority, then I think I don't think that's tackling the issue. I feel like you do need to recognise that even though it's a minority, it's still an issue. And I think I mean, agree. football is, it'll still be an issue for a wee while, sadly. Um, but it's it's a start. We've, we have seen over the last few seasons um, stuff being done, but clearly more is still needed. Um, but yeah, that's all we've got time for on this review. We hope you uh, preview. Sorry, so many previews and reviews getting done just now. I'm a bit lost with all. Uh, so we hope you have enjoyed uh, plenty of content on our channel, all the previews and reviews of the games, as well as an exclusive interview with Ben Hennigan, former Mullow defender, speaking about his time down south since making a big move to Sheffield United and why that didn't work and a couple of other different bits and bobs. So do check that out. We'll have um, a preview. Of the book of the New Year's Day games and a review of these games that are coming out tomorrow as we record this on Wednesday the 30th. And um, so do check that out. Anyway, enough of my waffle. We hope you have enjoyed. Do remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and until next time.